Guinness Book of Records for winning all 10 British national titles, whether that's NABC, Senior ABA, Warwickshire Champion, etc, etc. He turned pro in 1982, previously living in the Midlands, Leicester, Coventry, and he knocked out a lot of people as an amateur too. He earned the right to wear the Kronk Gymnasium gold shorts after impressing Emmanuel Stewart while sparring there and you'd often see Errol Christie in the gold shorts. He won his first 13 fights 12 inside the distance now. His manager was Burt McCarthy so we'll hold Burt responsible for the matchmaking I'm guessing when they pitched Errol in with Jose Says, a big punching light heavyweight. Errol Christie's a middleweight. He was outweighed by 8 pounds. Christie came in at 164. Says came in at 172. Says was 13 free and 1 going into the Christie fight. He lost to a British fighter who I don't know much about named Carl Camwell. He was a light heavy. That was in the last round he was KO'd in the 8th. He also lost to Alex Blanchard for the Benelux light heavyweight title. He lost that TKO in the 10th of the 10th round. Now, for those who don't know Alex Blanchard, he was a very good fighter, Dutch, very popular over there. He was European champion and defended several times. He's a big puncher, 33 and 40, a natural light heavy. He was well ranked at stages of his career. Jose Says was also stopped by Piet Cruz in South Africa. Who's Piet Cruz, you're asking? Well, he's not an all-time great, but he did go on to become a cruiserweight world champion, beating Ozzy Ocasio, defending once before losing against Dwight Muhammad Kawi. No shame in that. He scored 10 KOs in them 13 victories before facing Christie. One of them against Tamo Uziverta, a Scandinavian, I think from Finland. Very good amateur. Went on to have a decent pro record. It was an upset. What was the mistake Tamo made? Well, he was a middleweight as well. He used to moonlight in the super middleweight division, which wasn't like um, an established entity in 1984 and he got knocked out so they bring Jose Says to Shoreditch the Britannia Leisure Centre there's Christie in the gold cronk trunks Christie is looking for a fight with this guy here but they haven't done their homework this is a dangerous guy and I remember Christie got caught with his left hand just had him down then there was a follow up some more left hands 46 Seconds, Larry O'Connell waves it off. And I'm just stunned. Just couldn't believe what I was seeing, bro. Now I get what you're thinking right now. Beach, you're making a big deal. He probably wasn't that good. He was co-signed by Emmanuel Stewart. He was one of the best amateurs we produced. He won 12 by knockout out of 13. I mean, after Christie lost, he went on a, another run... About seven or eight KOs straight before he took on Mark Kayla. And he got knocked out in that fight. And then he kept winning again. more Four more wins. Listen, the guy had Lou Duva in the crowd. 
co-signing him and maybe looking to do a deal with him. Raving over how skilled he was when he outpointed Sean Mannion, a former world title challenger. Over 10 rounds and he just washed Mannion on the scorecards. And then, you know, the jig was up in his next fight against Charlie Boston. It was 12-3 and three and not supposed to give Christie too much problems. Yeah, Boston took him out in eight. Crazy. Just took him out. He had Boston on the floor, but yeah. And um, I think we knew then the chin was suspect, you know. But the Jose Says fight, the matchmaking went wrong. Not because Jose Says was some great talent, but you took on a light heavyweight, right? Who had 10 stoppages in 13 fights. And he must be pretty tough. He went 10 with Blanchard and got stopped. And they threw him in there with Piet Cruz, who went on to be a cruiserweight WBA champion. So it was a big light heavy. So he's used to fighting big light heavyweights. I mean, I see Luke Goosen's on his record, someone he knocked out. That guy fought Frank Bruno at heavyweight. This guy's used to fighting big fighters. And he's a knockout puncher. Aggressive. He wants you to fight like Christy Ford. Matchmaking. Kaputs. Jose says, did he even go back to Belgium? Probably not, because he was in England the next month, fighting Harold Graham, another middleweight. Well, Harold Graham probably done his homework. And he came in at 170. Says only had a pound and a quarter weight advantage on Harold Graham. But, you know, Harold's a different bag of tricks. He wasn't looking for a fight like Errol Christie was. And Jose Says didn't land a glove on Harold Graham and got stopped in six. He didn't lay a glove on Harold Graham. Harold stood him on his head. One fight after that, Denny Sandries knocked out Jose Says in three. Uh, I don't think I've seen that fight, but you, you don't need to tell me about that I, I know Dennis tore straight into it. Dennis, one of my subs used to go to school with Dennis Andre, and they told me he was feared because Dennis was just an aggressive dude from Guyana. Came from Guyana, two-time world champion, fought Tommy Hearns, British champion and all that. But Dennis was just a phenomenally, phenomenally strong light heavy. Dennis can fight Jose Says or anyone like that. That's the only way Dennis knows how to fight. Says didn't go on to become nothing more than a journeyman gatekeeper, picking up a win here, getting stopped, getting beaten here. His claim to fame is knocking the shine off the golden trunks, the golden crunk trunks of Errol Christie that Saturday afternoon, man. Hmm. Errol Christie died of lung cancer in 2017, oh man, that, that was messed up. Never smoked a day in his life, but when he was boxing in the early 80s, he may have started in the 70s actually, you know, you could smoke in the arenas, in the halls where he was boxing, amateur clubs, the gentlemen's clubs where he was fighting and stuff, and he contracted cancer through secondhand smoke, never smoked a day in his life, yeah. Messed up. He died at age 53. Yeah. There's weight classes for a reason. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you can't take on a bigger guy. But you have to do homework on them. And know how to fight them. You can't just walk them down like you're walking down a regular middleweight. Especially a big, strong, aggressive, light heavyweight puncher. You can't do that. There's a reason why there's weight classes. Yeah. Tony Simpson was in the crowd when Errol Christie got knocked out by Jose Says. Tony Simpson challenged Dennis Andres for his light heavyweight belt, his WBC belt. And Dennis just ragdolled him. And Simpson was quite a strong middleweight. Challenged Hagler for the middleweight title. Dennis just manhandled him all night and stopped him. But the warning signs were there for Simpson. Simpson was 24-0 with one draw in the 70s. And they pitched him in there with a light heavy. This could also be in the matchmaking went wrong series. To be honest with you. They pitched him in there with a Zambian named Lottie Mawale. Who was a light heavy. He went on to challenge Matthew Saad Mohammed For his WBC light heavyweight title. Matthew knocked him out viciously. It's not online. But Mawale just crushed Simpson in a round. Knocked him out in a round. Unbeaten record gone. Dennis Andrews himself, he had a tough baptism into the game. Like, they pitched him in there with Bunny Johnson, the first 
immigrant to win the heavyweight title, a Jamaican, Dennis lost to Johnson. Dennis was pitched in there with guys like Bonnie McKenzie. Journeyman, not great fighter, but very tough dudes. They pitched him in there with Tom Collins, who was British and European champion at that level. Tough fights. And then eventually they pitched him in there with David Pierce, a heavyweight, who went on to be the British heavyweight champion. He knocked Dennis out in seven. He was a small heavy, but nevertheless a heavy. And he was a puncher. Knocked out Dennis in seven. Dennis recovered and became a two-time light heavyweight champion, but there's a reason for weight classes. Christie's career never recovered. He never recovered. He had the big clash with Mark Kayla. He got knocked out in that fight there. A lot of racial tension surrounding that fight. Let's just say that. He was then eliminated for the British title. A year or so after that, Charlie Boston, he took him out at the Alexander Pavilion. Jose Quinones, a known banger who campaigned in America, he took him out in four rounds. James Cook was 12-8 and eight when he stopped Christie. But don't let James Cook and his statistical record fool you. He could fight. By 1990, he was washed. He lost on points to Ian Strudwick, who was 10-0. and 0, and I guess somewhat of a prospect. His last two fights in the same year, 1990, he lost to Michael Watson, third round KO. And then to somebody named Trevor Ambrose in two rounds, who was 8-7. and seven. And we knew at that stage... Well, at least Christie knew that it was over. He was the golden boy of British boxing. Had the golden trunks of the Crump Gymnasium. ITV covered a bunch of his fights. Maybe his chin would have let him down anyway, but the misstep with Jose Says sure didn't help.